Hi, and welcome to the Home Assistant How-To with Bearded Thinker. Today we will be playing with the Xiaomi Mia Mosquito Repellent. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Before we continue with the today's episode, I really would like to thank all the members who have joined my channel. Thank you very much, your support really, really means a lot. And now, let's get back to video. In today's episode, we will be integrated Xiaomi Mia Mosquito Repellent, smart version, with our installation of Home Assistant. The only thing we need for this integration to work and to add it to our Home Assistant is ESP32 board. And it has to be at least ESP32 board, since we will be using Bluetooth connection. If you have Xiaomi Mia Mosquito Repellent and you have ESP32 board, the only other thing that you need inside Home Assistant for this to work is ESP Home. If you still haven't installed ESP Home, go check out my video on installing ESP Home inside Docker, or you can install it by going to the supervisor add-on store and adding the URL for the ESP Home repository. The URL itself you can find and copy it from the description of the video down below. So let's get cracking. For the first step we have to open ESP Home. And in ESP Home, we will click on the plus sign. Let's call this Mosquito Repellent. Let's click Next. Let's select the board. We will be using ESP32, generic ESP32 W Rover module. Let's click on the Next. Here, type your SSID password for the Wi-Fi and also here add your over-the-air or OTA access password. Let's click on the next and submit. We now have newly added device here. We'll go inside and we'll work on our configuration. Let's press on edit. Make sure that your Wi-Fi SSID and password are correct. And while you are here, you can also check your API and over the air or OTA password. Let me fix it. And I've fixed my Wi Fi and over the air password because also here I'm using my secrets file. And for the next step, we have to configure BLE or Bluetooth tracker. This will be ESP32 underscore BLE underscore tracker. With the addition of this line to our YAML file, what we will do, we will create Bluetooth tracker that will track all the devices that are emitting Bluetooth signal or Bluetooth identifier. That way, we will be able to capture the MAC address. And the next step after we get that MAC address, we will have to edit it by hand here in the YAML file. Let's press save. Let's close this. And let's here select compile. As my system is very slow, it will take some time. On the normal systems, it usually takes one or two minutes. For me, it will be probably some around 10, 15 or 20 minutes. While this is being compiled on my system, the next step for us is to go to the ESP Home web page. Or to be more precise, we need to download the ESP Home Flasher. On the GitHub, the link will be down in the description of the video. Find the installation. Click on the Release section link and here you will be presented with the option of files. First one for macOS, the second one Linux and the following two are for the Windows platform. If you haven't already, download the version that suits your operating system. I will be downloading, once again, Windows 64-bit version. It is downloaded and I will move that file to my desktop so it's easier to start. Let's check what's going on inside ESP Home. It is still compiling. 
and after some 10-12 minutes on my very 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 slow system, compiling is done. Let's press on download binary. And binary should be now downloaded. Next step is to upload this binary to our ESP board. Make sure that you have connected your ESP32 board to the PC you are currently working on. The light on the board should turn red. And the next step is to open the application we just downloaded. This is the ESP Home Flasher. Let's select the COM port. In my case, this is COM7. Let's select the firmware. Mosquito repellent. Open. And let's press on flash. Okay, the flash process is now done. If you see this, this means that there is an error. It's called burnout error. One of the reasons why this could happen is that the voltage supplied through the USB cable is too low. And this can happen on the ESP32 boards when you are running both Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. So what you have to do is you have to disconnect the board from the computer or disconnect the cable from the computer and plug this board, for example, to the USB charger of your phone. When you connect the board to the ESP charger, once again, the red light should lit up. You can go back to ESP Home and try pressing on the logs. It can take, it can take. This process can take a couple of seconds, but you will then see the log output from your ESP board. As you can see, we have activated also the Bluetooth tracker. Scan duration is 5 minutes. It is already starting to pick up some MAC addresses from the devices that are nearby. And the next step, what you should do is you should make sure, first of all, that your Xiaomi Mia mosquito repellent is turned off. Press the power on button and hold it until you see the blue flashing light. We will be now looking for the very specific signature of the Xiaomi Mia mosquito repellent. If you do not see your device in time and the mosquito repellent turns from the blinking blue light to the white light, you should turn it off and start the Bluetooth scan process once again by holding the on button while it is starting. You also should make sure that your device, your Xiaomi mosquito repellent, is close by to your ESP board. Soon in the log file we will see scanning started and after that we should get the response from the Xiaomi mosquito repellent device. As you can see we now have found a lot of devices but the device that we were looking for is this one. You can recognize it by the name MJMRV1. I presume that this is Mia mosquito repellent version 1. We have to copy this MAC address. It usually starts with 74A34A. Let's copy it. And we can now stop this. We need to go back to the mosquito repellent YAML file. And here we have to add a couple of lines. First, we need to activate sensors platform. So it will be sensor. This part will be left blank. And the next thing that we have to add is binary sensor. Platform for this is Xiaomi WX08ZM. Next thing that we need or can add is the name. For example, if you have multiple devices, you can name them by the room they will be placed in. But I'll call this one Xiaomi Repellent. Next mandatory field is MAC address. And this is the address that we were waiting for. So let's add double quote. And inside double quote, let's paste the MAC address we copied previously. And now we will be adding two binary sensor names. One will be called battery level. And this one will be tracking the status of the battery that is used for ventilator inside the repellent. And the other one will be called tablet. 
and this one will be tracking the remaining time or remaining percentage of the chemical that is used to repel mosquitoes. Tablet. Name. Smart repellent tablet. And as we said, the next one will be better level. With the name smart repellent battery we can now save this and we have to upload this to the board itself since we have previously configured ota or over the air by pressing the upload we do not need to connect the board itself back to the computer this will be all done through the wi-fi network again for me this is a wait of around 10 to 12 minutes And as you can see, the difference is that the system is now automatically uploading the firmware to the board itself. We have to wait for the board to respond. So what is the difference now? Here we can see that we have added mosquito repellent called Xiaomi repellent. And it's tracking two things, tablet resources and the battery level. You also can see that the repellent is currently on. Let's stop this. And the next step is to add this to our integrations page. There are a couple of ways. One of the ways would be automatically done by the system. Let's check it here. New device is discovered. But unfortunately for me, I don't see it here. So what I'll do is I'll go back to ESP Home logs and copy the name of the device this is mosquito repellent.local we copy this stop go back to configuration integrations click on the plus sign type here esp paste the host name and click on submit here you now have to enter your over the air password And you can select the area where this mosquito repellent is. It will be in the living room for me. And let's click on finish. We can see that we have one device with three entities. And those entities are smart repellent battery status, smart repellent tablet, and the Xiaomi repellent. Let's add this to our home assistant. Let's go to overview. Let's go to fun stuff. Let's click on three dots, edit dashboard. Hit the plus sign and select entities. We'll call this Xiaomi Mia Smart Mosquito Repellent. And let's select the sensors and switches we just added. First one, we will be adding status to see if it's working or not. It's called Xiaomi Repellent Binary Sensor. And next we will be adding battery status and tablet status. Let's click on save. And here it is, status from our Xiaomi Mia Smart Mosquito Repellent device. First one is showing if it's turned on or off. The next one is tracking the battery inside the device itself. And the third one is tracking how much of the tablet or the chemical there is left inside this device. So let's check how fast it takes for Home Assistant to see if the repellent is on or off. I'll be turning it off now. And this is around 17 seconds. If I turn it on, it instantly detected. So from what I've seen, it takes from, let's call it like that, one second up to half a minute for Home Assistant to register if the device has been turned on or off. Now we have added Xiaomi repellent in the Home Assistant. The next question is what we can do to automate tasks and what tasks are there to automate. I will not be adding all the possible options, but well, let me give you a couple of suggestions. 
One would be to track the usage of the device itself. For example, if the device has been turned on or in the state on for more than 8 or 10 hours, I could send myself alert to notify me that I should turn the device off. Next one that I can track is the status of the battery. For example, if it falls down to 10% or 5%, I could receive the notification that I need to replace the battery. And third one, and this one we will be doing, is the status of the repellent tablet itself. Let's go to configuration. And here we will be adding a new automation called order new Xiaomi tablet. And for trigger, we will be adding numeric state, tablet, below, for example, 35. We will call service, notify our bot, and send us message by new repellent tablet exclamation mark and let's close the quote let's press save so now we have uh, one automation that will be triggered if the state of this tablet falls below 35 percent and let's add additional one replace mosquito repellent once again, we'll be using numeric state for the tablet. If it falls below 7%, call service, notify bearded bot with the message mosquito repellent is empty replace tablet and this is it when the value of the mosquito repellent falls below 35 percent we will receive one notification and the next time it falls below seven percent we will receive second notification telling us that it's time to replace this Unfortunately, due to the nature of this device, you will not be able to directly control and turn device on or off, but if you have followed the steps from Xiaomi, then you've probably installed the Xiaomi Mi Home app, configured your Xiaomi Mosquito repellent there, and you will be able to control device from there, either manually turning it on or off, or programming the timer so that the device automatically starts and stops at the specific time of the day. And this is it for today's Home Assistant How-To, where we cover the Xiaomi Mia Mosquito Repellent. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did enjoy this episode, please give me a like. It means really a lot. If you still have some kind of a comment or a question, or you have idea for future videos, you can always find me on my Discord server, but feel free to leave comment down in the comment section below. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future updates. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.